So welcome to my Flush Tube channel, uh, Coco Creates. So I'm Zoe, um, Coco is somewhere, um, pottering around, doing, doing something she probably shouldn't be. Um, <laughs> so uh, this is my Flush Tube channel, this is a channel about um, sort of cross stitch and uh, some various other hobbies uh, that I do a bit of knitting um, that I've got to show you today as well. So. Um, so we, I'm downstairs sort of in the conservatory um, at the minute because that's where I've been stitching lately because there's some really good light here. Um, so my, my big projects were downstairs so I, I thought I'd film here. Um, we have some nice light coming through the window. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that it, it you know, reflects on the stitching and that you can see the stitching okay. Um, it might not, I don't know. Uh, I think last time I filmed um, here it was quite, it was a really cloudy day so it was a bit overcast but We'll see how we get on. So it is a nice day here. So, um, I mean, it's cold, but I'm inside, so it's fine. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's not too windy. Um, a bit cloudy, but not too bad. So I've been um, keeping track of the temperatures because I'm doing, that's a new thing I've got to start, actually. I need to decide on my fabric. But I'm going to be doing the temperature tree sale that uh, Julie and Alyssa did last year. Um, so uh, I managed to find, I managed to get in touch with one of the weather um, meteorologists, sort of weather recorder station people um, in Peterborough. And um, I basically asked if there was any chance that they had the weather data for Peterborough for uh, 91, which was the year I was born. And he did, and he sent me all of that. He sent me all of the data in a big spreadsheet. Um, I vaguely explained what I was going to do. I thought if he's not a stitcher, he might not understand. So I tried to explain it. Um, but yeah, and he sent me all of that. So I now have um, all of the data for 1991. So that's the year I was born. And then I'll be doing a temperature for this year as well, which is 2021, which is the year I'm 30. So I thought that'd be really good to have the two and then put them side by side. Um, so yeah, so I have to... Uh, find a piece of fabric that I want to do them both on and then I'll be starting them um, at some point, maybe this month, if I've got time in between all my other stitching. But that could be my my, my non-official birthday start, that I didn't start on my birthday, but I can pretend, you know, <laughs> we, we can pretend it was, can't we? So I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, but yeah, and uh, um, we'll see how that one goes. So, so I hope everyone's okay and had a good month. Um, yeah, and, and so if you're coming back, so thank you for coming back to, to see me. Um, if you're new, hello. Um, so I hope you, you like me, hope you like my videos um, or my projects. Um, if you do, then uh, give me a like and a subscribe. If you don't, then don't, you know, no hard feelings. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, so um, but if you are returning, thank you very much, Lee. Um, I think up to two, 250 ish subscribers um i haven't checked recently um but yeah that's that's quite scary thinking like visualizing how big 250 people is sort of thing um and like if they're all in my house like listening to me right now that would be really scary yeah so <laughs> let's not stress about all the other people that are on the other side of this camera so there we go um so yeah, so how has everyone's January been? Um, sorry, someone's pulling faces at me through the window. This is what happens when you try and record a video with other people in the house. It's terrible. I can't even, the window's like right behind the camera as well. <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> um, happy January. So how's everyone's January been? That's what I was saying. So, um, so yeah, mine was, you know, not too exciting. Um, being in lockdown here, uh, we haven't, uh, we can't sort of go out. Um, so she says some of us are shielding, so I'm not supposed to go out at all. Um, I think the furthest I've gone is to walk to meet my mum from the bus stop at work, just to get out of the house. And I've been in the garden, and that's about it. So, um, so yeah, so January was nothing exciting for me. Um, I did have my birthday in January and um, I didn't have a birthday start. I had a birthday finish though, which I will be showing you. Um, but yeah, so uh, but I have got a new start planned. 
So, um, so yeah, so I will show you that uh, in a minute. But um, yeah, so where do we where do we start? So we will start with um, stuff I've been working on or whips. So works in progress. Um, the first bit I worked on of the month was the Dark Queen of the Sea Sal. So this is a Sal by Autumn Lane Stitchery. Yes. Um, and it's, uh, let's see, we're coming up to part six, I think now. Um, I think it goes for about a year, but something in my head is telling me there's 10 bits, not 12. Whatever, we're coming up to part six now. So um, that got released, um, well gets, gets released today, so I think at about four o'clock my time. So I'll probably start working on this either later tonight or tomorrow. Um, I have done the explicit version, like I mentioned in my last video. So um, she is topless, so I have covered her up with a needle minder. Um, if you want to see without the needle minder, hop over to my last video. But I will keep, be keeping her covered most of the time, just for you guys. Um, so yeah, so part four, five, part five, was the, I need to get one of those boards. I said that in my last video, didn't I? Still didn't get one. Um, part five was the, all the seaweed and the coral here. So that was that bit. And I love this brown coral. It uses one, two, three, four, five colours look at the variegation just on that brown coral look at the shading rather but yeah that's amazing but yeah so I love that bit so um so yeah so I'm not sure what what part six is going to be um but we get to use some of our sparkly thread so some of the petite treasure braid um and that's how I get to see some well. I've never used petite um braid before so that'll be that'll be interesting but yeah so there she is. And the needle minders, these two needle minders are um, from Autumn Lane Stitchery. So they're those ones. And this one, I believe, is from um, Denkai Designs, I think. So it's that one. But yeah, so that was that bit. And this is um, using the uh, Under the Sea fabric that I bought. So that's in a 32 even weave, I believe. Um, what's that one? I think it's 32. So, yes, yeah, so that's what I worked on first. Um, a couple of you said you quite liked my, my progress and my numbers, so I um, thought I'll share how many stitches I did. So that was uh, just coming up to 3,000 stitches, so it's 2,998 stitches um, that that piece was. So... I know, I know. I did, I did think about email allowance saying, can I put two more stitches in just to get 3,000? But no. Um, <laughs> so, so there we go. So that's that one. And the next piece I worked on was my big piece. This is my uh, supersized Max Colour um, Haid. So Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, this one, it's 745 stitches high by 999 wide, I believe. So it's, it's quite a big one. Um, so this is my... Kind of 20 year project and I did I only managed uh, 2,500 stitches on it so I didn't quite hit my goal in January um, and part of that was because like January kind of got away from me a bit it got to um, I think the 30th of January so it got to um, sort of Saturday and I thought oh, okay well I'll I need to do a few more stitches on this so I'll do that next week and then it'll be ready for February and someone was like no no February's like like, to, like, like January ends, like now. And I thought, and I was like, I, I swear, like there's still another week of January. Like, where did all of January go? So I just completely ran out of time. So, um, but yes, yeah, so I'll be working on this a bit extra this month to try and make up for um, not, not reaching my goals there. So let's uh, pull, hopefully hold my threads all out the way. So you can see, there we go, and that's what I did. So I worked on, um, so finishing this strip up here. So you can see, oh, whoops. So you can see some more of the flowers have come out here. And we're just starting to see, I think the deer, it's a deer that's there, uh, the legs of the deer. So 
hopefully on this next pass down we'll see a bit more a bit more of her but yeah so I managed to get the I can't remember exactly how far down the 2500 went but I got the nose of the polar bear done which was quite cute so that's this that's the second polar bear there and um and yeah I got this one done as well but um but yeah so I only managed um two and a half thousand on that so so 1500 stitches off my goal so um two or maybe three days two three days stitching um extra this month on that one you know in the shortest month as well so I need to like make sure I don't run out of time uh this month <laughs> so um and then I worked on my other Hade again I didn't hit my goal on that one because I thought I still had time <laughs> um so this one is so that was by Amy Stewart that piece um and it's um two over one ten stitch on 28 count and it's like a coffee even weave um and then this one is on 25 count um oh, picked up a wire this one is 25 count one over one full cross so this is uh bath time by selena fennec so i'll pop in a picture of what it will look like here because this is all kind of the background at the top so it doesn't look very exciting um, but I managed uh, 2,023 stitches on here. So I think that was sort of this strip here. But I still have another couple of thousand to go, which will be down to her face. So hopefully, so I'm not quite there yet, but hopefully this next pass I'll get to her face, which will be quite nice. So, um, oh, and I did mention, um, I was watching, oh gosh, My brain's gone blank. The guys that do Fortnite fabrics, I can't remember what their channel name is, I'll have to like write that in somewhere. Um, I was watching that and one of them was saying about, um, he's got a frame and it's it's quite um, unstable in the middle of the fabric, it's quite baggy. So, and I mentioned about these. So you can get side tensioners, um, but I just happen to have some of these lying around. These are actually um, sort of mattress clips. So they're what you'd put under the bed to hold your bed sheets on so and they just have like rubber inside there to clip onto the fabric um now i wouldn't recommend because so, it does damage the fabric slightly because obviously you're gripping it with some i mean it's rubber but it's pointy um i'm assuming the side tensioners are similar um but yeah so it's not too bad on this because i've used the selvage of the um fabric and then this one um, I have overlocked the edge, but also I know that my design is going to end somewhere here. So I know that I've got a good six inches there. So if it does damage the last couple of inches of fabric, there's still plenty of room for me to finish framing. So, but yes. So if you happen to watch this video, that's what I was talking about. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's that one. So that is um, another Hade. So that's a regular size, regular amount of colours, that one. Um, then where did I go next? So next I worked on the human cell. I can never remember what it's called. I check it every time. And I think it's humans after all. I think is what it's called. It's Clouds Factory. And I bought the kit. So this is the Clouds Factory fabric and, and all the threads. Uh, the threads are DMC and DMC a 12 um, on there. But yeah, so this is a 30, 32 linen in whatever it was called for. So, and I worked on this bit here. So I did re, um, so I unpicked and re-stitched my cavemen in uh, a more appropriate skin tone colour and then started to stitch some of my little cave drawings here and the mammoth and then i put in but i think there's still something to go there it seems like a space so i think there's supposed to be something there i can't remember but yeah so i used a bit of the air twirl in the um in the little flame that he's got i don't know if you can sort of see the sparkle at all mm, maybe not but there is a sparkle there um a little one but it is there so yeah, so that's that's what I did um, for 
on that one. So it was uh, 819 stitches I put in. So because I had to unpick all the skin and then restitch all the skin. Um, but yeah, so that one's coming along. So that's uh, that section almost finished. This was I bought this as a sow. Uh, obviously, I didn't keep up. Um, it ended in 2019, I think. I think it was a 2019 sow. Um, I believe, and yeah, so I have all the parts. Um, but yeah, still, still working my way through, <laughs> through there. I'll get there eventually. So, and then, um, oh, we seem to go through this quite quick. Uh, have I missed anything? Quite possibly. So my next piece was, um, so I'm part of the Magical Stitches Facebook group. Um, so a lot of these were, were from some of the, the various tasks on there. And then one of them was to work on your oldest whip. And I said I wanted to try and work on my oldest whip or my smallest whip sort of every month, um, sort of like Andrea C does. And um, so I managed to get my oldest one out. So this is my swan. I haven't got a picture of it. Um, of what it looks like. It was a design that I tried myself using some um, conversion software so I took a free to use image um, sort of off, off of Google um, that I liked and then ran it through Jane Greenoff's pattern creator so about 15 years ago um, and and then got the pattern. So I actually managed to do two, just over 2,000 stitches on her um, and so I'll be putting up pictures of where the stuff, where, you know, the befores. Um, but yeah, so this is where she is. So I've finished all of the, let's put all them over there. I finished all of this confetti that was in here where the writing was. So it says Moonlight Inspirations. And I'm thinking I might go through, once I've finished, and actually backstitch over some of the letters, um, just to make them stand out a bit more. Because some of the shading's not great. Um, and then I got to start on the moon and because I'd finished all the confetti, I basically went back to doing um, sort of doing it in, in blocks and parking. So using the pattern. Now I did try to convert this onto Pattern Keeper, but the only pattern I have for this is one copy of four pages sellotaped together um, that's 15 years old. So it's not a great copy and I, I put it in and trying to line up all the lines because my paper copy was a bit crinkled and not great so yeah trying to line up all the lines I was just it took so long and I was getting so stressed out I thought you know it's not even worth it like the amount of time I've spent trying to port it in I, I could have just been stitching so I'm doing this rather than doing my normal diagonals or anything fancy I'm just doing this square by square just just 10 by 10 blocks all the way down um and filling the moon and then obviously once i've got to here i'll decide whether i want to keep doing it across or whether i want to go down because the bottom of the design is you know i mean this is nearly halfway down i think so the bottom of my design is down here you can sort of see part of the swan that i've done in white white thread there um so i, I have to decide which way i want to go but i'll do that when i get there so yeah so this one is two over one full cross on 18 count Ada. Um, and yeah, so like I said, a bit more to do on that to bring that up to, to square. But yeah, so I'm hoping to work on that a bit more this month. Um, part of the, one of the challenges is to do sort of 2000 stitches, stitch chunks. So um, I'm hoping to get another chunk done on that before I pop it away. So fingers crossed. And, that, and then my uh, last whip, which um, I actually finished, was my unicorn piece. Um, and my piece of a unicorn, not my unicorn chart, as in one that I really want that I can't find. Um, so this was my um, piece of the unicorn and it from Anne Logan um, design. So I, I detailed sort of how, how to find the pattern in my last video. Um, and where to get it from because it is no longer a free design um so yes but yeah i finished it so i did change the pattern slightly um made a couple of changes which i will show you but yeah so this is obviously where it was and this is where it is now and yeah 
she is all finished so there we go so she is square um so i know the original design wasn't square it was um sort of rectangle but I think there was another what we're we looking at three sort of 30 stitches down and then across i think it worked out to another three thousand three or four thousand stitches yeah, but it was all just the background, all just the background sky, there was nothing in it. And I thought, oh, I thought it's so old, like I don't want to spend any extra on it. And I worked out that actually, to make it perfectly square, actually fitted the design quite nice. So this is, I think it's like three, you know, 100, 256 by 256 or something. I don't know. If I know, I'll write it in. Future Zoe hates me. I always do that. I'm like, oh, I'll do that later. And then I watch the video back to edit it and I'm like, I still don't know any of these answers. So now I have to go find them because I said that I would put them in. So yeah, Future Zoe doesn't like me. But I love her. I love you, Future Zoe. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I managed to finish that. So that's one of the changes that I made. Also, um, it had lots of odd sparkles. Not, not sparkles. Um, I think they were supposed to be sparkles, but they looked a bit more like sprinkles. It was like two, two or three stitches in the lighter colours. And I think it was supposed to represent the stars, but they, they it just looked odd. Um, so there'd just be like two little crosses there and maybe three there and, and two here, but like all over the place, even over the top of the unicorn and that. And it just, in my head, I couldn't picture why they were there. Like it didn't look like a star. But I don't know if it was the software that she'd used, if, you know, if this was charted from a, a picture and she ported it, I, I literally don't know. Um, so I, I took them out. So as I worked along, um, if there was one anywhere, I would use whatever colour was next to it. I, I would just blend, you know, port the colour across and replace it with, with an actual background colour instead. Um, but yeah, so there's lots of pinks and blues and purples in the background and then uh, the multicoloured tail and mane but yeah so she's all finished so she's had a wash um still, the fabric's still a little bit grubby at the edges but i mean it, this piece has been you know it's, it's been in and out of frames um scroll rods hoops um uh, this piece has actually been cyprus on holiday with me um so i stitched on this on the beach in cyprus uh that's where i started it so it's it, it's allowed to be a little bit grubby so it's had a good wash um it hasn't been ironed yet so i need to still press it a bit um but i only finished it yesterday so i wanted to wash it and have it dry overnight so that i can show you um but yes yeah, so now i just need to find how to finish it so i'll see if i can find a nice little square frame but i don't want too much of the fabric showing just because the fabric's not clean not it's not all pearly white <laughs> so um, it depends what size it is as to whether I can actually find a frame that will fit it or, or what I'm going to do with it so yeah so that's that's that one so this was done on 22 count hard hanger um, two over two full cross all DMC um, I do regret doing the two over two it was very hard work uh, the stitches were very thick it was very hard to put in like where I had where I had sort of done all the stitches around and I needed to do one in the middle, that was really hard to make sure I was getting the needle in the right place. Um, the only reason that I carried on like that was because I'd done, I'd done so much of it um, before I realised that like I was allowed to do one over two, uh, so I one one thread instead of two, and I wasn't going to unpick it or start again because I'd already done a couple of thousand stitches. So I was like, no, I'll just, just keep going; it'll be fine. Yeah, so but yay, that's my first finish of 2021, and that's my second oldest piece done. So that's that, that was one of my goals this year, so I can tick that one off. So yeah, so I'm even though I finished it a few days after my birthday, I'm counting that as my birthday finish. So um, and that because that's a thing now. Um, but yeah, so that's all my projects, uh, my stitching projects that I worked on. Um, I have got a knitting project um, that I'll show. Um, so this was the Cozy Up Knits. Um, 
their floss tube, they floss tube, they have a YouTube channel, knit, knitting, um, knit tubes. So uh, it was their sort of knit along that they had for a uh, mystery knit along for, for January. So it came out in five sections, one sort of every Friday in January. Um, it came out and so I the latest piece just came out a couple of days ago it's on Friday so I'm part way through so I'm nearly close to being finished because I've just got the very border to do now um, and then I can I can block it which will be quite exciting so and that is let's see so I did it, it using um, so it uses a regular it calls for regular double knit and a mohair and I didn't have any double knit that I wanted to use um, I had some four ply, so I messaged the girls and I was like, you know, can I hold two strands together or will that be too bulky? Because um, I know two strands of four ply kind of makes a worsted weight, which is thicker than a double knit weight. Um, but they said, yeah, that'd be fine. They said you can do obviously one strand, but it make it smaller. Um, I'm quite a big person, so I wanted a, a bigger cow, a bigger shawl. So oh, there we go. So I use these colours. Now these are from uh, Ruby and Roses yarn so if that'll focus of course it won't it never focuses ruby and roses yarn so she has a website um that i'll link below uh, and this is her window box uh colorway in both the sort of in the rose gold stellina um and the rose cloud so that's the rose cloud which was a sort of mohair mohair base let's see if it tells me uh, no, it was baby suri and silk. So yeah, this was really soft, nice and soft and fuzzy. Uh, and then this is the Stellinus. So this is uh, Super Porsche Merino Nylon and Stellina, which is the Sparkles. Oh, and it's two ply, not four ply. Well, it's a four ply weight, if whatever. But yeah, so it has got some sparkles in it. They're not really going to show up, I don't think. It's ever so slightly sparkly, but yeah, so, and I just love these colours, and I thought, you know, I'll, I want to use them. So, yeah, message the girls, and they said, yeah, do it, do it like that. So, uh, this is a bit crumpled up, because it's on my needle still. Um, it's a half moon shawl, so that's the long side of the half moon, and that's obviously the flat side, <laughs> so that's supposed to be the flat bit. Um sort of along there but yeah and it's got a um cabled border so the actual border is um sort of a rope cable which was really fun to do um awkward to start um but yeah because you use sort of a tab tab cast on um whoops nearly dropped the ball of wool so yeah you use a tab cast on um but a cable tab cast on so yeah so the the ladies did a good video tutorial on how to start that and then you've got some feather and fan bits done and then some uh, garter ridge um, short row stripes in there so with the mohair and then some more garter ridge then there's some Estonian button stitches there so just the little blobs which are actually quite quite fun to do, a lot easier than doing bubbles. Um, so I will be using that stitch in the future. Um, then there was sort of this, which is kind of like little crosses, which was quite fun to do. Uh, then some more garter ridges, and then I'm just on the fan, feather and fan border, and then I think I've got to just finish off with the mohair. But I'm holding um, two strands of the mohair together for the border part is what the pattern says. So I think I'm just about to move on to that now. So yeah, so hopefully I'll have this finished in a couple of days and I can show you, show you it off next week. And I'm doing that on four and a half mil needles. So there we go. And that was that one. So that's the only sort of knitting project I've been working on this month, um, really. Uh, do -do -do -do. Let's find my page again. And there we go. So that's all my stuff I've been working on and my finish. Um, got a couple of shout outs to do and a wee bit of um, all, uh, one of my orders came through and then a uh, the giveaway to look at. So um, 
Oh, I didn't add up my total stitches for the month yet. Um, oh, yes, yeah, so on the unicorn, I did one, two, three, four thousand five hundred and sixty two stitches. So that's where most of my time went um, as it was getting close. I thought, no, I'll just finish it. Just a few more stitches. I'll finish it. You know, just a few more. And then I, I completely finished it. So that's why um, I think I didn't reach my goal on the other two because I spent more time on that. So but I finished it. So it's like, which, you know, ups and downs. Um, but I will add up all of all of those and pop the number in here. So that's my total stitches for January. Um, like I said, a couple of shout outs. So um, Stitching Michaela. Stitching Michaela. Oh, gosh, I'm sure it was. If it's not, I will correct myself somewhere here. But it was uh, Stitch Michaela mentioned in her comment um, uh, a design that she'd finished. She'd finished the Stay Classy piece last year um, from that was done by Michelle at Mama Loves You GB. Um, so I've just started watching uh, her videos. Um, I think I've only watched one at the minute. Um, her, her most recent one to catch up on. Um, yeah, so her most recent one I've got to catch up on. It's on my to be watched list and I watched the one before that. Um, but she did a lovely Mill Hill, um, or she's doing a lovely Mill Hill sort of square piece with um, like a reindeer and a sleigh with, with a couple of people in. That actually looked really cute. So yeah, so head over and watch, um, have a catch up on her. She's got quite a few lot, um, sort of little, you know, smaller pieces. So cushions, not cushions, you know, the little, I like pink cushion style ones, but I don't know, that sort of one, but they're quite cute. Um, I've also been watching Lancashire Stitcher. So Lancashire is in the county. Um, so, and, um, and yeah, some, some of her pieces are nice. She's got a nice voice to listen to as well, so it's really nice while I'm stitching um, to watch. But one of her pieces, it sits just behind her, I think, here, um, is actually a... Um, like a, I think it's from Heritage Crafts. I might have just made that up, um, but it's in like a, a map of Lancashire, of the county. So it's like an outline that has some key features in. And I've been looking for the tiny wheel one of those to do um, for my dad, because that's where he's from. But I haven't found it yet, so I'm, I'm still on the hunt to try and try and find it. Um, so I thought that might be quite cute. I might do the Cambridgeshire one as well, which is where I live. Um, but but I'm still on the hunt for that one. I keep looking. Um, Keep sort of looking around. Um, I think it was on the website, but I think it was out of stock for quite a while. So I think I'm just waiting for it to come back in. I haven't looked recently. Um, I will have to check that one and um, see. But then it goes against my no buy, no no new buy no patterns. So I might just have to sit on my wish list for a little bit longer. So, and I've also been watching um, Pam's Crafty Corner. Now she her stitch alongs. She was, and I don't, I don't tend to watch many people's sort of stitch alongs, stitch, stitch with me's, um, just because I've got so many other videos to catch up on and I feel really bad. Um, but I have so many videos on my watch list that it's like I have to pick something to not watch. So, but her stitch with me's, she sometimes she stitches, sometimes she knits, um, and she does a crime, pod, sort of work crime podcast. So she'll sort of. She was talk through um, a crime case today and um, sort of a true crime, you know, um, I think all of them so far have happened sort of in the the county she is, so near Newfoundland or um, sort of Toronto, you know, the area that I believe she lives near. Um, I believe she lives near there. I don't know. They all seem to be from the same sort of place, so I assume it's near where she, she is or where she's from. It's in Canada. Sorry, bad. Bad info there. Uh, go and check her out and then you'll know whether it's from there where she is or not. Um, but yeah, so she does a crime, crime and coffee chat, crime and coffee podcast, coffee and crime. It's called something like that. You'll see it, you can't miss it. Um, the thumbnail for them is is uh, coffee with a load of coffee beans. So there we go. So, and they're quite fun. They're normally about half an hour-ish uh, tops. So they're, they're quite good to listen to. Um, while you're stitching um although I do have to every so often stop and sort of not obviously look up um because she's not showing anything apart from her stitching but just sort of to really listen to what she's saying um so but they they are really fun really interesting so I do love those ones 
um but yeah so and my um so that was my shout out so i got my order came through from um crafty crafty kitten so dawn at the crafty kitten yeah that's what it's called i'm sure it's called crafty kitten yes crafty kitten there we go um so i ordered these pieces um in april um and they they took quite a while to get here part of it i think was because um it was difficult to get the fabric in because of the pandemic and then i know she wasn't well for a time and i don't know it's not great that it took so long um and there was very little communication but it got here um one of the pieces didn't die so good so she is dying up another piece of that for me um to send but yes so i got a few different bits i didn't actually i took them out of their packets but then didn't drop down their names so i still have to put up packets so this was where are we we have midnight roses so this is a piece I'd originally ordered for um, Oh, I can't remember. I'd originally ordered this for something um, and then I got another piece of fabric for it. So it's 13 by 18. So it's a fat eighth, I think. Fat eighth of a cut. Um, it's a bit more purpley than that. Only slightly. It is very bluey pink. So... Um, but yeah, I sort of got the smaller cuts because I, I hadn't ordered from her before. So I thought, well, I'll get a few of the smaller cuts just to see how they die up. And that. So this is a 36 even weave. No, 32 even weave. So Jodelin. That's that one. And then we had a piece of, uh, this was Wedgwood. So this one came out a lot, lot lighter than it did on her website. This was a very dark blue. Um, but it's come out as a very more sky blue. So it's not too bad. I think I have got um, a project for this that I'm thinking of um, that would sit on this one if the fabric's big enough. I need to double check. But I literally can't remember what it was. I thought of it and thought, oh yeah, that'll go well. And then promptly forgot what it was. I've got nothing. Nothing at all. But yes, so... That's a, that's a 28 count uh, Lugana. It's, it doesn't feel like a Lugana though, because that's a Lugana. Maybe this is the Jobelin, maybe she marked them wrong. But yeah, that's that one. And then this is oatmeal, so this is a 40 count linen. So I think I've got a fat quarter in that. No, it's... No, this is the 13 by 18, they were 9 by 12. There we go. So this is a fat eighth. They were a fat sixteenth. I'll get there eventually. So this is oatmeal. So this is quite nice. It's um, it's sort of greener than a coffee dye. Not not green though, but sort of a greeny hue. So it's um, a bit cooler than a coffee dye. So a coffee dye can be quite warm. Warm beigey one, but yeah, this is quite nice. So this is a forty count. So I ordered this because I thought I have a couple of um, of Nicola Parkman's samplers, hands across the sea, um, and I thought I might try and do them on on a forty. Um, I know I've got one that at the minute I'm doing on a fifty six, um, but I thought I don't want them all quite quite that small, um, perhaps. So um, yeah, so there's a piece of forty count to try. Um, with that one and then this piece again this didn't come out quite as as dark as I wanted but it is quite nice this is Southern Lights um, and this piece I bought for Pandemic to do Pandemic on so I think I got the uh, 25 by 27 inch um, again this is 40 count um, I think I decided to do this side but yeah, so it's a bit pinker than it's showing there. There's a bit more sort of bright pink in it, um, like that. You know, it's a bit bit pinker. But yes, so and there's some 
yellowy greeny blue splodges and all different colours. So I, I ordered this one for Pandemic. So I was hoping to start last year, but um, I, I was just waiting on the fabric and uh, stuff. So, but now it's here and I'm quite happy with that one. So that's what I'm going to do. I need to just triple check that it is the right size. So I believe I double check, I checked when I ordered it that I ordered the correct size. Um, but I need to double check not only that this is a 40 count, um, but that it is big enough. So, and I have on the way some natural silk from um, Jo over at Silks For You. Um, so in Australia. So, and that's, she's gonna send that um, in my next month because I get the Silks For You of the month, pack of the month. Um, so in my next one of those, um, she, she's going to send that in. So I think it's, I think when I had asked her, I'd just missed her sending this one, February's one or something. Um, so it'll be in, in March's pack. So it should come in about, about four weeks time. So it takes a couple of weeks to get through the post, um, from when she sends it to when I get it. But, uh, I'm not in a hurry anymore. So, um. But yeah, so when that comes, I will be starting a pandemic. So yes, so that's that piece. So I was going to, I was due to go for surgery on my, to have my leg fixed. Um, and that was going to be my hospital piece because it only uses one colour. So I thought, oh good, I can take that. I don't have to take loads of thread. I can just take one bit of silk. It's one pattern. And you know, if I get bored, I can sort of move around the pattern. But the surgery got cancelled again, so. Not doing that so i would just probably start that when when the thread comes through um but yes so and then lastly we have uh, uh my giveaway so um i put up um five five different designs last time um i think only one of them got claimed um which was by stitch and michaela and that was the um snow leopard design so let me um that was that one so yeah so, and it was Stitching Michaela that got that one. So, um, I will comment on your comment, darling, and then um, if you can email me your address and I will get that popped in an envelope and on its way, um, on its way for you. Then I have a few more designs. So I thought, well, I'll go with five again, you know, because I'm figuring if I pick five, hopefully there's one that somebody will want. Um, any that don't get claimed will sort of go in the bottom of the pile because I have a lot. So they just go to the bottom of the pile, and then once I've gone through all the rest, I'll go through them again. So, you know, in like a year's time or something, and we'll go from there. So, let me see, I've got my pen so I can actually write down what words. So, first of all, is this, it was a little free, free kit that came in, Cross Stitch Crazy. Um, so, and it's teddy bear gift tags. So they're all cute. See, so the patterns are all in there, the threads, um, ribbons, and the gift tags to back them onto. So it all comes in there. Um, so yeah, so it's DMC thread, uh, 14 count Ada. And yeah, so uh, if you would like those, um, use the word Teddy again in your in your comment. Um, then my next one was. Uh, an Emma Congdon one. So this was uh, Make It Mum This was an alphabet. And if you can see, it's like a, um, almost like stained glass, I suppose, alphabet. So does she, oh, mandala inspired. There we go, mandala. So and it's the full alphabet and then the numbers 0 to 9 is in that one. So if you'd like that one, um, so that you want the alphabet. Um, then what was the next one? Oh, Alpine Beauty. So this one is Autumn Chalet. So, and this is by Leslie Tear. Oh, so I like this one. I can't do them all. I can't, I've, no. So it's a little chalet and then some deer and some geese in the background. So, um, oh, and some pumpkins for the autumn. So if you'd like this one, say you would, say, uh, use the word deer there. So the one with the deer. 
so that's that design uh, that one is full coverage and oh i've got a size for it it's what, 160 by 160 so 160 by 160 it's quite a decent size um so that's that one oh that's part of that that's the key better keep all the pages together and then i've got a victorian christmas one so this is a round design and if i can sort of maybe hold it there so it's like a christmas scene with the christmas tree uh taking decorations out to pop on i love her dress that she's wearing um sort of that style of dress it's got the children in as well but yeah i do like that dress um uh, I do like this. This is Maria Diaz. I like her designs as well. So, but yeah. So if you want that one, um, use the word Christmas in your things. So, um, so what's have I got a rough design size for that? Uh, so it's circular, but it's one eighty by one eighty. Um, it's not quite full coverage, and obviously you've got the corners because it's a circle, so it's not quite quite fills that one and then I've got this little bird cushion which is really cute um, okay I'll make a deal if, if no one claims this then I get to keep this one um, but yeah it's this little bird cushion so I've, the cover page was part of the other pattern um, not the cover, so the page with the um, with the title on it but it's uh designed by amanda gregory so it's blue tit and a robin and a couple of branches there there's a smaller picture of it just there um but yes so if you like that say you want the uh to stitch the one with the birds the birds but yeah but if no one claims this one then i i will give you to, to stitch the, the robin i don't think i'd stitch them like this but i might stitch the two birds sort of separate and, and sort of finish them sort of as a little you know little soft finish um separate but i've put it in the pile to go for the giveaway so i have to offer it I, I can't just keep all of them so if you get that you can either you can either do it like this or do what i said and do them separate um but yeah but if no if no one claims it then i, I will keep that one <laughs> so Gosh, I'm awful, aren't I? I'm like, oh, oh, you can all have this, but if you don't, <laughs> I'm going to keep them. I can't keep all of them. So, yes. Um, <laughs> but I believe that is a sort of finish um, for today. So, yeah. So, plans for this coming month. Um, let's see. Uh, like I said, I'm working with uh, Magical Stitches. So, um I think they've released their sort of you know this week's challenges so um a couple of them were basically to work on projects that had certain things so one of them had to have um sand and my animal kingdom uh one of the shelves has um some sand in it has a, a camel um uh, on some sand so i'm going to use that one and uh, one of them uh, is to work on an animal with sock uh, sorry, a piece that has some socks or stockings and my humans piece uh, Shakespeare has socks on and uh, so I'll be using that one and also work on something blue or on the humans piece again um, the uh, sort of medieval lady has a blue dress so I will be using that for that one and also it's to use stitch on one that has animals and humans and I have a mammoth and humans so that one comes in for three of those prompts so i believe they're 300 stitches each so that'll be 900 stitches on that one which would be good um and then one with a dessert and that threw me a dessert item i thought i oh, know i have that tea time pattern that has some little cake on so i might dig that out and work on that one um and then a camp activity so an activity you'd want to learn or, or, or on the camp and i thought oh, i don't know i haven't got a whip like that so that one's going to set some thinking and then obviously i'll be working on my queen so um 
so we, with whatever whatever she has um but I'm, she might unfortunately go to the bottom of the list this week because i have those other pieces to work on um but i've got a whole month to do it so depending on how much stitching there is um if it's anything like when i did her hair or her skin that took a long time um but we'll have to wait and see so and i uh, got some uh, sort of reading challenges to do this month we get to read the first percy jackson book i say we get to it's not like there's a law that i couldn't read it before now but part of the challenge is to read the first percy jackson book so i haven't read them before um i did buy them uh, last year they were on offer somewhere i thought oh, i've never read those i'll buy those um so it gives me an excuse to actually sit down and read them um they're not very big books i know they're young adult books so it shouldn't take too long but like just because it's a young adult book or a children's book doesn't mean like I'm not allowed to read them because I'm 30 now like th there's no rule like if you want to read children's books go ahead like um you're allowed so I I, I say you're allowed so there you go uh but yes so um so I think that's all my stitching stuff um I always sort of get to the end and I, I see a lot of other people do life updates and I'm like oh do I do I have life updates like has anything happened in my life but then I also remember that I've been doing, gosh, I mean, this is what my 15th, 16th uh, video. And I don't know if I've told you much about me at all, apart from, uh, you know, that I live in the UK and that I have Coco, I have a cat. Um, but what we might not know is that I actually have, um, at the minute I have five cats, so not just Coco. Um, I know some of you are going to be disgusted that I haven't actually shown you all my other cats. Um, so they're, they're, they're not very camera friendly. Um, so I'm not going to drag them all in and show you on the video. But I will put some pictures up here just while I'm talking of my others. So obviously I have Coco. So she's my, my big girl. So she's part Maine Coon. Um, she was a rescue from uh, our local cat rescue charity. Um, but yeah, so we got her as a kitten. Then uh, we've got Gizmo, so my little Gizzy. Um, she uh, was um, a kitten from uh, a friend whose cat had kittens. And then we have Maggie. So Maggie was another rescue for her. And it was not long after that that we realised that she has um, uh, almost like learning difficulties. So she's um, a chimera, which means that genetically she's her own twin sister. So a few characteristics that she has of that is she has a really, really thin tail, like a little rat tail. Um, her eyes work independently. Um, the colouring of her eyes is different. So the back of her eyes is not green, it's quite dark blue. Um, her depth of perception isn't great. She has quite a lot of blind spots in her vision. Um, but also she perpetually thinks she's a kitten, so she won't grow up. Um, so she's... Uh, hence we wanted to get a kitten to play with her that was how that story started um, and then our old girl so this is Bumble so Bumble is a tiny teeny tiny cat um, I always joke that she kind of got bored of growing up and just stopped because um, she's so small she's very lanky so she stretches she stretches out like a slinky but she she also curls up very teeny tiny so, um, so yeah she's our old girl she's coming up to about 10 10 12 now um, so she's our, our oldest girl um, and then we ha I have a long-term foster for um, a basic friend that um, sort of went back over to Australia um, her family where, where she's from um, and she's she's got some family there but uh, then all the pandemic happened and she kind of got stuck there so I've been sort of fostering um, sort of looking after her, her cat here um, since then and then obviously when she comes back she will she will have her back again um, but yeah, so so that one, she's um, she's just realised that we have a telly. So after like a year, um, she's just realised that she can watch the TV, and she's become very taken with it. Uh, especially when we watch any wildlife programmes that have birds or other animals on, she's um, very excited. And now, any time that she comes in, even if the telly's not on, she'll look up at it just to check there's no birds on there. Um, so she's she's just realised that we have one of those. So yes. So they're my five cats, well, four and a half. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, so I, I live here. So uh, I don't know if any of you gather, but I, I moved back home with my parents. So um, once my disability worsened, once my condition worsened, and my doctor 
signed me as unfit to work so I couldn't work and not being able to work it meant I couldn't afford a, to rent my own place so I had to find somewhere to live where I didn't have to pay as much rent um, and that meant I, ha I came home and it was only going to be short term and that was about six years ago so I was only coming home temporarily and unfortunately then after that I found that my condition wasn't curable uh, my um, disability is, is degenerative and it there is no cure there's no treatment um, so when I realized that I wouldn't get better it was okay well I'm never going to be able to to you know live on my own so so yeah so I, I, I live home I live at home um, so my father's retired uh, my mum's an optician so um, she used to work at the minute in with the pandemic. She's a key worker, um, basically in the medical field. So, so she still goes to work, um, which is interesting. So, with uh, sort of safety um, and keeping everything clean when she comes home from work and not touching anything and and that. But you know, we we carry on because you have to. Um, but yeah, so that's why well, I suppose I get quite a lot of stitching done is because most of my day is spent sat here stitching or knitting or playing with the cats or you know or sleeping um but yes so that's a tiny little bit about me um but yeah so yeah so i hope you have a um so have a lovely february so february's coming so it's a short month but hopefully i'll hit my targets because i've still got my my big projects to um to work on so fingers crossed i i hit those and i hit my goals and um and yeah and i will see you in a month's time scary but yes so love you lots i uh, hope you enjoyed the pictures of the kitties and i will see you soon so be good take care